Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel Angie B Crafts. Thank you very much for joining me. So today I'm just going to do a relatively quick video around using oil paints on a gel plate. So here I have my 6 by 6 inch gel press gel plate. This is the brand that all my gel plates are purely because the first one I ever got was and I've just stuck with them. They're reasonably priced and I've never had an issue with them. Um, I really like them. There are others about, but this is just the one that I've chosen. Okay, so I got some oil plate oil paints recently. I've never had them before, so I just got a set of small tubes. These are Dale Rowney ones, and I think I got them from the range, which, if you're not from the UK, is a UK-based um, shop that sells absolutely everything. I don't know whether it's like your Michaels or Joann's over in America, but it's they sell all sorts and they have a craft area. So I picked these up last time I was in there and it's the first time I'd ever played with oil paints and I really like the way that they work. And then a crafty friend of mine said, have you put them on your gel press yet? Because she knows how much I love my gel press and I hadn't. So now I have and I thought I'd do a little video about it and just talk you through it. So one of the first things to consider is whether or not these are going to react with the gel plate. Now I've used this one now probably three or four times with the oil paints and I don't see that it's caused any detriment at all. It doesn't feel particularly dry. It's not starting to pit in any way. And I've been doing it now for a few weeks. Um, initially I was very diligent about making sure that I cleaned it but I've kind of stopped that because I hate cleaning my gel plate and I much prefer the bits that come off so I've not been quite as diligent this time and it's not caused a problem I can't guarantee it won't cause a problem but so far mine hasn't but I have chosen to keep one specifically for oil paints just in case it does so that I know I'm not going to ruin my other gel plates so I've got my 6x6 which is now my oil paint gel plate. I wouldn't like to say that after a wee drinky poos. It's a bit of a mouthful. Right, let's start with some nice bright colours and start with the real basics. So I apply with a palette knife just because it's the easiest way that I've found to apply oil paints. You can put them onto the palette knife like this and then start spreading or, as you often do with acrylics, apply them straight on. I love the fact that you get quite a lot of texture because of the thickness of the paints, but it's up to you. And another thing that I love is that if you do this sort of a mo movement, you get stippling on the plate, which translates into additional texture on the, the, the image that you then print off. Okay, a little bit of yellow. A little bit of orange and let's pop the red on as well and just do them all there we go I do like that red the colors in this are absolutely beautiful that red is primary red and it's fabulous just looking at the screen there there doesn't seem to be a lot of difference between the orange and the red on screen there actually is in real life it can sometimes be difficult to truly see the color of things on film but hopefully it will come across in the print. I'll get that red on. So for the first pull, I'm literally just going to pull the colours I've put down. I'm not doing anything fancy. It is just to show you they go on pretty much the same way as an acrylic and they come off in the way that they come off, which I will show you in a moment. Now what I tend to do, as always, is have my raggy with me, but I tend to just wipe off the excess onto my raggy, um, just to clean off the palette knife ready for the next one. Okay, so I'll get a piece of paper. Oh, they're sticking together. There we go. And then I'm just gonna lay it on top and give it a rub. Now what you'll find, bearing in mind these are oil paints, that you do get an oil seeping through. You can just start to see there's like marks coming through. That's just because we're using an oil based product on the paper so it's going to absorb through. It isn't a grease proof paper so you can see it coming really clearly there. We're getting lots of oil markage through. That actually does reduce when it dries. Okay. 
so if I pull this off you'll see the fabulous look at that vibrancy and you can see where I've stippled on this one and I didn't stipple on this one so you get different effects I just think it looks stunning now one thing I would say oil paint takes a long time to dry and then even longer to cure so when it's dry it means that you can touch it and it's not going to transfer off onto your finger and it's not going to feel wet but if you've got anything that's a bit thicker it won't be cured underneath it forms a crust over the top so you need to give it time to dry properly that can take days so you can't work on these and then immediately start working on them as a project you need to give them time to dry so that's one thing to be aware of right so the next thing that I'm going to do is show you how they come off just with the way that you would with an ordinary gel plate pull just put some acrylic paint on spread it over the plate like so and let's see what happens with the second pull now I am getting a little bit there of colour transfer because obviously your oil paint isn't dry and that's absolutely fine because that's my scrap paper for cleaning off my brayer so I'll pop this one on now I've done quite a few pieces of this now and I, I just love the effects I just think it comes out really really nicely So this is now the acrylic. You can see the oil isn't coming through the paper as much because we've got that layer of acrylic. So you're not getting that same absorption of the oil through the paper. Your acrylic is a form of plastic. The plastic is preventing the oil from seeping through. But it does still pick up some of the oil paint. I'm not going to say it picks it all up, but it does pick up some of it. And you get this lovely muted tone. So if we put these side by side, they just look fabulous. I absolutely love how these work and you can see on this one more so there's lots of other bits that I've picked up from what was left on from previous pulls that's as close as I'm going to get to cleaning this off for this I'm going to add other colors now and we're going to see what we end up with but what I am going to start to do is start to add in textures as well so let's have a little bit of green we'll pop some green in here Ooh, what do we think? A little bit of blue. I do love this blue. Carillion blue. Love it. And ooh, let's have a bit of purple, I think. Oh, I wish I'd gone for the paler green now. Never mind, we can use that next time. So this purple is just called violet and it's just gorgeous. So this time I'm going to brayer. Just to show you, you can use your brayer in exactly the same way as you do with your acrylics. What happens is you transfer an awful lot of the paint onto the brayer. So you can see you get a lot more on the brayer than you do if you're doing acrylics. It tends to transfer off the plate a lot more easily. If I run this back over now, let's get a little bit of a graduation of colour. I'll roll that off. We still get the interesting pull off piece that we get every time we use our brayer on our gel plate but you do then get bits of oil paint on here and they do rub off so it's probably worth either having an allocated oil paint brayer or giving this a wipe while it's still wet. I tend to use a cleaning product, either a baby wipe or something with soap in it to clean that off. Right, now I have here some of good old reliable bubble wrap. So I'm just gonna do, I'm just gonna use it as if it was acrylic. I'm gonna add texture in the same way as I would with acrylic. I'll be honest with you, I've not used bubble wrap until now on the oil paint. So we'll see. Oh, that does a really lovely image there. Right, now I'm going to use this and I'm just going to start adding in little bits, almost like little windows, little bits of patterning, just to see. And it's all about experimentation and don't be afraid to experiment 
with the products you have because that's half the fun bits that the days that I enjoy the most are those when I'm actually trying out new things because it just gives me a challenge oops apologies I just knocked a bottle of paint off right so again I'm going to do the same I'm just going to do transfer straight onto here and you can start seeing straight away we're getting the striations of the oil so this is where the thicker bits are where I've put the palette knife on it almost looks a little bit like the metal staircase pattern which is one of my favorite patterns actually right should we see what this is like oh I like that that's a rather gorgeous background I love the effect that bubble wrap has on the gel plate. I just think it's phenomenal. Right, so this time I'm going to use a stencil. This is a stencil by Pretty Gets Gritty. I'm not going to put that on yet. I'm going to put my paint on first, then put the stencil on. So you don't need too much paint on here. And I'm going to hazard a guess this is going to go nice and blue because I've got blue on my brayer yeah and that's fine so what you find is once you've put the the oil paint onto your brayer it's a bit stickier it doesn't roll quite as freely so just be aware of that it does change the dynamic of the brayer I'll just check yeah not neither of my ends of my brayer have come out there so it's just because of the oil paint I'm gonna pop this over the top and get another piece of paper. This paper is not wanting to separate at all today. Right, pop this on. Give it a good rub. So I love the fact that this is just introducing a new medium and there will be another video following on from this one over the next couple of weeks that will go into using the oil paints with other mediums and seeing how that is. I haven't done that so far so I need to kind of get to grips with it first and then I will start introducing it. Oh look how cool that is. How amazing is that for a background? Love it. Love, love, love it. So if you look at those two now, side by side, you wouldn't even know it was the same pattern. But it is, it's just taking it off with another layer on. Oh, I love it. So what happens if we now take this off, get another piece, and just pull that. I think this is going to be interesting. Give it a good rub. So I'm making sure that I'm getting really, really good contact. Remember, once you put your acrylic paint on, you're not going to get that stain in the same that's coming through because the oil is protected from the paper, or the paper's protected from the oil, really. Okay. Oh, that's lovely, isn't it? That's really lovely. I'm getting a bit excited about this now. Can you tell? Right, I'm going to put some of that nice pale green on that I was saying I, sh I wished I'd used previously. Do, do, do. And we'll have slightly darker blue this time. This one's ultramarine, which is actually probably more of a purple than a blue, but never mind. I'm going to go back to just using my palette knife to spread it because I want more texture in it this time. So I will keep an eye out for any damage that occurs to my gel plate. I'm not saying that this is the safest thing to do on your gel plate because I've not been doing it for long so I don't know if it has caused damage but to date it's absolutely fine it is making zero difference to my gel plate in fact potentially the oil is helping the gel plate I'm just thinking about it we shall have to wait and see um, what should we have in the middle a little bit of mm, orange so you can tell I'm really good at colour theory as well. I just choose a colour and plonk it on. 
So I'm just giving texture onto here. We can add additional texture exactly the same way as you can with acrylics. One of the things that I love about the palette knife is the way that you can just add texture so easily. So you can add really fine texture by using the nib or the side or you can do much bigger texture by using it flat or by scraping like this. Scrape that off. I'm actually going to put a little bit of yellow up here because I think I'm kind of making a bit of a scene, aren't I? It appears that way. I'll put the yellow up here and then I wonder if we can drag it out any. So we're going very basic in our shapes, but it's just to get the idea. Oh, then we can add some yellow bits down here. Again, I'm just using the end of the palette knife. Hmm, looks interesting. Looks interesting. I want to add a little bit of blue here. I'm getting really into this being a scene, and it's probably going to not look anything like a scene by the time I pull it, but not to worry. One of the things that I love is just the thickness of this. Yes, you can get thick acrylics, but this just seems to work in a very different way. A little bit of white. I'm just gonna pop a little bit on the end of my knife. Let's add some lighter tones in there. Do, 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 do. Oh, I'm liking this. Right, so let's take a pull off this and see what we end up with. In fact, no, I'm going to do this one on white and then the next one I'm going to do a pull onto black. So like I said, this is just a really, really basic video using them for the first time. So if you want to have a play, you can see what you can do. These are just some very, very simple ideas. There's so much more you can do with them. Oh, that's brilliant. I love it because you've got the texture from the stencil in there as well. But I like the, the texture that I've managed to get in here with the palette knife. Fabulous. Oh, I am liking this. Right, this is going to be the last pull for this video. I'm just going to pop some white paint on and just do a mop-up pull, but I'm going to do it onto black just for a change. Because what we're going to do if we're doing it onto black because we've used white paint it's still going to give the colour the lift as if you were doing it onto white but then the background is going to be different. I shall show you what I mean. One piece of black card. I'm going to go for the smoother side of this. It's got a slightly hammered texture and a smooth texture so I'm going to go with the smoother side just to make sure I get as much contact as possible. And let's see what we end up with. I'm loving it. I do, I love anything to do with my gel plate. I must admit, I am a distinct gel plate holic. So, tonally, you get a very different, if we bring in the other one and you can see them side by side, we get a very, very different look. But that's the same colours. So you could actually build up on this as a background for a scene using other paints or even starting to add in oils without using the gel plate or start to use the gel plate and add in the colours in different layers. There's so much you can do. But I love this one. I think this one's brilliant. I love this bit here particularly. There's just something very organic about that and very um, oh, outdoorsy very natural 
sort of nat nature naturally organic around here. I like it. So yeah, that's an introduction to what you can do with oil paints onto a gel press. As you can see, there's still some left. Now, just before I started the video, there were some bits left on, more bits left on from a previous time I'd used it. So I just did a couple of quick pulls and pulled them off and they came off in exactly the same way as your acrylic does. And you saw at the beginning, the plate was pretty much clean. It still had some bits on it, but it was pretty much clean. So leaving them sitting hasn't caused it any damage. So I am going to continue to do that. I will be honest, if I find that it starts to cause damage, I will put a video up saying it's starting to cause damage because I don't want you guys to be ruining things. Um, I'll do that for you. I'll quite happily ruin my stuff to experiment. Um, but hopefully it won't. To date, there has been absolutely nothing detrimental to the gel press at all. You can see it's not not damaged at all, it's not drying out, it's exactly the same as the ones that I've used with acrylic. So yeah, I hope you found that useful. I hope you'll now all root out your oil paints and have a play with your gel plates with oil paints. Uh, if you have any questions, just pop them in the comments section. I'm more than happy to answer any questions you have. Um, and have a look at me on other social media, Angie B Crafts on Facebook, Angie Mary B on Instagram. And thank you very much for taking the time to watch me. See you again soon. Bye.